Good afternoon and welcome to NYFP. On this Friday afternoon, the major U.S. stock averages are trading near the flat line. Joining me now to weigh in on the action is Peter Cardillo of Rockwell Global Capital. Peter, good afternoon and happy Friday. Nice to be back. Well, right now the stock averages are trading near flat, but we have to keep in mind that we're set for a lower close for the week. Now, we did see a sharp decline yesterday, and we saw the VIX soar on that volatility. But what do you make of this week's action, and do you think this is the beginning of a correction? No, I don't think it's the beginning of a correction. I think it's the beginning of a pullback. In fact, I think what's happening now usually happens in September. We just anticipated it, and the reason being is that we had a backup in yields. I don't know why that happened, because, you know, the economic news um, is basically pretty mixed. It doesn't change the whole uh, picture of the economy continuing to grow at a modest pace. I guess perhaps maybe some of the comments that we got out of the uh, uh, Fed speakers this week, uh, you know, basically um, with the same rhetoric, uh, may have uh, uh, ignited uh, that uh, fear uh, factor again. But again, you know, if you look at the economic data, um, most of it was positive, but certainly uh, we didn't get anything that would suggest that perhaps the economy is poised to grow above three percent anytime soon. Certainly, from the uh, from the inf from an inf uh, inflation perspective, uh, that's pretty much well anchored. Uh, look at the PPI. Look at the consumer's price index. Not much in there to really suggest that uh, the Fed has to worry about inflation right now. Um, I suspect the fact that we got this back up in yields uh, is going to cause the market to stay bumpy. Uh, there's a good possibility that we might uh, test the S&P lows, uh, 1630, 1640 range, um, and uh, that's where we have a lot of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of support. Uh, the first support that I was looking at, at the 1375, uh, um, again, 1675 range, uh, was violated yesterday. And so, I, um, you know, I, I don't think the selling is over just yet, but I would um, uh, uh, view this as a real buying opportunity. Well, Peter, you brought up a lot of important points, and next week we'll be getting uh, the Fed minutes midweek, and we'll be getting more housing figures. In addition, we have a ton of uh, earnings coming out from retailers. Now, this week we got some mixed earnings out from the retailers, as well as the guidance weighing on shares of some companies. And given that we're seeing higher mortgage prices, and that could be starting to affect the uh, U.S. housing market, what should we watch out for next week? Well, next week, you know, we have leading indicators, but we do have the Fed minutes, and I guess that's going to be the real key play of the week. We have some housing data, and uh, as I said, uh, leading economic indicators along with the Fed minutes are probably going to be the highlight of the week. Um, in terms of the housing, I mean, if you look at the uh, housing data that came out today, uh, housing starts were up, but we didn't see r any real strong showing in terms of future building. So um, that could be an indication that perhaps the higher mortgage rates are beginning to slow the recovery. But again, you know, um, the, the recovery uh, is mostly in the multi uh, 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 housing sector, that is the buildings uh, uh, with multiple families, so we're seeing uh, a real uh, spike there. But in terms of uh, um, single families, uh, the market seems to be uh, headed for a bit of a slowdown. That, that I'm not suggesting that the housing sector is going to sour or go into negative territory, but it, there, there is a definite uh, piece of, uh, of, of in, uh, there is evidence that uh, the market might begin to feel the pinch of the higher mortgage rates. Again, strong as can be, but I think we probably have peaked in the recovery of the housing market. And Peter, before we wrap it up, I do want to get your take on what we've been seeing uh, overseas. Now, we have some uh, geopolitical concerns regarding Egypt, and 
because of that, we did see some safe haven demand yesterday in terms of commodity prices. Yeah. Now, we'll also be getting a global PMI data up from the U.S., China, and the Eurozone, and we'll keep an eye on the Eurozone, although it's a flash reading given the better than expected second quarter GDP. So, what's your global perspective? Uh, the global pers my global perspective really hasn't changed. I think, you know, we've stopped um, losing economic steam in China. Uh, growth is probably going to be close to 7.5%. As far as the Eurozone is concerned, the news gets better almost on a daily basis. I'm not too sure if uh, the uh, gross domestic product number for the Eurozone really um, paints a, a solid picture of uh, Europe actually being out of uh, recession. I mean, technically speaking, yes, if you look at the numbers, but remember the powerhouses that um, that turned the, uh, the GB, GDP numbers around came from Germany and France. And uh, so, you know, um, uh, I suspect that uh, uh, the reality is that uh, uh, most of the European southern countries are still in recession. And so, uh, while those numbers look good, uh, and certainly, again, the numbers are improving and we are looking at a rebound in Europe, but I wouldn't, you know, uh, say that uh, uh, all of Europe ills have been cured. Okay, Peter. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this Friday, and we'll talk more ahead of the Fed minutes next week. Thank you very much. My pleasure.